we want to share with you um, our, about our, our keynote speaker on today, Dr. Robert Watts. And um, I'm going to read a little bit about his bio, but I also had the opportunity to uh, meet uh, Dr. Watts earlier uh, this year at a conference in Clovis with United Black Men uh, that was encouraging young people to aspire to higher education and look at leadership and different issues. And uh, just uh, at that, that moment of having the opportunity to, uh, to meet him, I had heard a little bit about him, uh, but I was really intrigued by his uh, uh, compassion for community, uh, his uh, concern about uh, building capacity and leaders and individuals. And I've appreciated even over this, this summer the opportunity to get to know him. Uh, his insight has been uh, very helpful, and I really appreciate that. Well, good morning, Fresno. Good morning. Good morning. It's a little weak. <laughs> Try it again. Good morning, Fresno. Good morning. Uh, I don't know. That's, you can't break the huddle like that. I mean, but an athlete, you know, got to break the huddle. You got to get excited. So, good morning, Fresno. Good morning. Good morning. I like that. Now, get yourself a hand. I'll tell you, I'm really excited about being in Fresno. I've been here 13 years, and I want to. Before I get into my talk, I want to say something that I think we all need to hear. Why not Fresno? Mm -hmm. I mean, wherever I go, whether it's Northern California, New York, wherever I go, people come to me and say, where do you live? I say, oh, in Fresno. Why are you living in Fresno? Mm -hmm. And then, ironically enough, in Fresno, when I introduce myself, and people say, uh, are you from Fresno? I say, no, I'm from the South Bronx. And uh, wow, you're an author, and you play pro football, and you're a university professor, and da 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 da. Why are you in Fresno? <laughs> and I looked at them and I said, Well, why are you in Fresno? Because I'm no different than you. I think I'm in a great place. I'm blessed to have found Fresno, a safe place to raise my children. That's why I moved here. Friendly people, when I moved into my neighborhood, came out of their homes to help me unload my truck. That would never happen in San Francisco. <laughs> it would never happen in Oakland or New York City. <laughs> People wanted to help me unload my truck. I could walk down the street and pick food off a tree. I could go to a rodeo. I could be grounded in churches that uh, haven't forgotten what it means to be community. People pass you on the street or see you in the supermarket say hello to you. You can take things back to the store, no one argues with you. <laughs> That's Fresno. The, the things I've just described to you are a set of values. And it's on values that we rest our whole existence, lest you forget. And so that's why Fresno, and we should be proud of being in Fresno. We should be happy that we're in Fresno. We should be thankful that we're alive today and we can call ourselves citizens of this great city. So with that said, I want to thank Tate Hill for allowing me to come in and present some ideas I think may be of value to you to help you to continue to advance what it is that I think is important here in this great city. Uh, there's a video clip that I want to share with you. When you weren't there, the unexpected response from one man is giving some kids a chance to better themselves. Former Oakland Raider Robert Watts said that one day he ran across a group of kids just hanging out and using the pool on his vacant property. When he tried confronting them, they ran. But Watts caught up with them, he sat down and talked with them about what they were doing. He developed a relationship with the kids and helped them to improve their behavior. Today, he threw a party to congratulate their turning over a new leaf. I found some value in kids, and I think that these kids, because of the fact that I see the value in them, turned around a 360 from the behavior that they were exhibiting prior to me engaging them. Watts wants us to remember there's no such thing as a bad kid, just kids without the opportunity to be good kids. I wanted to share that with you because that was really an impromptu situation. I, I, was, I owned this land over there off of uh, Northwest Fresno, and uh, it was vacant. These kids were just vandalizing it, throwing things in the pool and tearing it up. And uh, I sat in my truck one day at a distance and just waited for them to show up. And sure enough, they climbed the fence, and they're in the pool, and they're doing their thing. And I said, okay, 
gotcha. Mm -hmm. So then I eased on to the property, and of course they saw me and they started scattering. And then there was one who was slow. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not correct when she says I caught up to them, because hey, I had 20 years in football, I can't catch up. <laughs> so I limped on to the property. And, uh, but nevertheless, you know, I, I, you know, don't, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but you know, I am a Christian, I'm, I'm a believer, so uh, I know God created that situation, and I was able to catch that young man, and I said, don't panic. Uh, okay, sir, uh, sir. Slow down. Calm down. You're not afraid of me. You're afraid of what you're doing. This is your conscience. Somebody raised you, right? You're not calling me names and attacking me. You're afraid of me. <clears throat> the truth is you're afraid of you. So let's talk about why you're afraid. So we had this conversation. And he calmed down. He put his clothes on and we talked. And his friends are peeking over the fence. I said, wait, your friends are. So they climbed back over the fence. And we sat down and we started having a conversation about them being responsible. And me being in their community as a property owner. And I had renovated the property and cleaned the property up. It was an eyesore in the community. I said, I've improved the community. Why are you punishing me? I care about you. What is it that you need from me? Well, it's so hot and it's like 110 degrees. We got no swimming pools at home. I said, okay. Well, I tell you what, until I rent this property, I'm going to show up here. When you get out of school from 3 to 6, so you can swim. Really? Yeah. I'll show up. I'll open the gate. You can swim. I'll supervise it. When it's 6 o'clock, pool's closed. Oh, cool. Then I looked at them and said, how many people here are football fans? No, not in this room. No, thank you. <laughs> I, I asked those children. I said, how many of you are football fans? And they said, uh, we all are. Yeah, these guys. I said, how many are Oakland Raider fans? Oh, Raiders. I said, well, I used to play for the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> you would have thought somebody said that Christmas was going to be every day. You know? And they were just astounded that they were talking to an open radio. One of them said, I'm going to go home and check and you wait. <laughs> I said, I'm glad to see that you want to inquire. Don't take my word for it. So he ran home, went on the internet, came back. <laughs> wow. Oakland Raider. I said, you don't know who you're going to meet in this life. You don't know who can influence you. You don't know who you're hurting today. The purpose of my talk is twofold. To support the chamber, which I think Ted Hill has done a phenomenal job at steering. So before I get too deep in this, I want to give you a hand. Really, sincerely, in the deep part of my heart, uh, I mean that. And I hope that as I go through this talk today, that you will hear the echo of a lot of what you do because this is a young man who has his head in the right place and his heart is aligned with his head. But as I was saying, um, uh, to support the chamber in fostering a new culture and to extend that goal to the African American community and the greater Fresno community in general, because we're not working in silos here. We're working with all of Fresno as a community. It appears that our community must subjugate a veil of false myths about us personal agendas, confusion in our identity, a paralytic distrust of ourselves that causes our community to be anxious, fragmented, on pause, and reaction. As a social psych psychologist, uh, part of my responsibility is to observe everything in front of me and to visit with people and to be an action researcher and collect information when I talk to people, to try to understand the dynamics that shape their lives and their communities. And it is really the synthesis of all of that that shapes that statement that I just read to you. I have sat down with people who run agencies in this community I've had the benefit of being someone who comes from the outside, so I can be sort of a participant observer. I'm a, I'm a threatless person here. No one sees me as a threat. I have no stake, so to speak. So the community veil, those things I just read to you, 
false myths, personal agendas, confused identity, paralytic distrust of ourselves, and anxiety, are a veil. And what I mean by a veil, I'm talking about a symbolic veil. Human beings as creatures use language to understand their reality. We shape our reality with our words. Words stand in as a representation of what it is that we see. And so it is through that filter that we see the world. And unfortunately, sometimes, react to the world. It is my interpretation, after the experiences I've had in this community, that largely the veil, the symbolic veil that we function with, is made up of those entities that you see on the board. And we don't have the time in a keynote for me to drill down into them, but I will pick one out of that list to talk about. It. And that is paralytic distrust of ourselves. Because when we don't trust each other, we can't get anything done. And we can talk about the history of why we don't trust each other. We can get into that. I'd love to pull you back. We'd have a workshop around it. But the truth is, when we say the African American community, it doesn't matter what city I show up in, I'm in it. Rural, city, mountains, doesn't matter where it is, if we're there congregated as a group, we're in the African American community. We need to understand that. And we need to try to give some real form to that and some real meaning to that and re inject some spirit back into that. So, what are the consequences of functioning behind a veil like this? Anxiousness? We are anxious. As a psychologist, you need to understand what anxiety is. We cannot live in our communities and see people on drugs and alcohol, abusing each other, and not deduce that we're not anxious people or depressed people. And I'm not saying that that's you know, indigenous of just us. That's the human condition. But for us, we need not have any other Achilles heels. We had enough historically to hold us back. We can't be that entity. But our anxiousness has to be arrested in some way. And right now, we're arrested by anesthetizing ourselves too often or getting lost in other things that keep us from understanding who we are as a creature. We talked about this community. Look around this room. I see a bunch of young folks over here. Some of you right? I see a lot of young people. We have a pretty good demography in here. So that last piece right there, number five, is about succession planning. Who's leading when you're not here anymore? What happens if you get in the car and leave here and don't make it? Suppose you get called today. Who's going to leave? Who are you preparing to be the next servant leader? Are you creating that in your community? Who else is willing to give up what they consider theirs for what's best for everybody? Are you building that kind of consciousness in the community? If you're not, we're going to start over again when you're gone. 